to Beijing and the pressure Olympians are facing, and we're not talking about the competitions they will take part in. Tonight, the FBI is urging Olympic athletes traveling to Beijing to keep their personal cell phones at home and use a burner phone as there is a risk of cyber attacks and data theft. Beyond that, there's also the difficult position Olympians are being put in as China moves to squash any criticism ahead of the Beijing Olympics. Here's Britt Clement. As the world spotlight beams on Beijing for the Winter Olympics in just a few days, China on the defense, squashing any criticism over its human rights record. A Beijing Olympic official warning athletes forms of protest could be subject to certain punishment. Human rights activists going as far as encouraging athletes to stay silent, saying the IOC can't be trusted to protect Olympians. Reports of Chinese officials also cracking down on dissent on its own people, jailing critics or confining them to their homes. Despite the threats, some are still speaking out. Hong Kong, Tibetan and Uyghur activists joining forces for the No Beijing 2022 campaign. Their message to the world... Watching the Olympic Games is not just a simple entertainment. It is you that is helping to legitimize all these human rights abuses committed by Beijing. You are helping to build a propaganda platform to allow the CCP to continue to normalize its authoritarian behaviors. The United States, along with a number of other countries, announced a diplomatic boycott of the Games, but athletes will still compete. Beijing has accused the movers politicising the event and vowed there would be consequences. Of course, we welcome the decision, but then, of course, aside from these uh, governments and world leaders, we, of course, hope that athletes, sponsors and also broadcasting networks and individuals are also going to be joining us in a boycott as well. Hong Kong activist in self-exile Joey Su, now in Washington, D.C., has been at the forefront of calls to boycott the Games. She was arrested last year for hanging a free Tibet banner at the Acropolis in Athens, ahead of the lighting of the Olympic torch for the Games in Beijing. She's been lobbying for the cause at the United States Senate, urging senators to maintain pressure on China. To uphold Hong Kong's basic freedoms and rights. Sue and others in the No Beijing 2022 campaign plan to host a series of online events during the Games. But experts say that when it comes to China, money talks. The IOC hasn't backed off. The brands haven't backed off. It's too big a market. They want access to the Chinese economy and the Chinese consumer. What do you think China wants to achieve with these Games? What's the aim here? First, to be a success. It shows to the developing world that China's model of development is successful and they want to win. I think that's also worth saying, you know, they really want to do really well at the Olympics. Despite Beijing's best efforts to keep politics out of the Games, its security crackdown in Hong Kong nearly two years ago continues to cause concern among human rights activists, as opposition members have been jailed and silenced. We were there when Beijing began to lay its heavy hand on the semi-autonomous region. Just saw the police moving forward, protesters retreat and again another uh, protester down on the ground being pinned to the floor. It looks like he's been arrested. Before China's crackdown, pro-democracy politicians like Ted Ho would often join street protests and make his opinion known in Hong Kong's legislature. But in November 2020, Ho fled, eventually settling in Australia in March 2021, saying he feared for his family's safety. Being afraid that people are following me. We caught up with Ho in Adelaide, South Australia. The regime was targeting me earlier than uh, all others. So they arrested me earliest and they, they tried making up stories and accusing me of the, the, or the acts that I didn't do at all. And I realized that if I don't leave, then that, that's the end of the story. I, I'll, be, uh, I'll end up in jail and I won't be able to speak up for freedom and democracy at all. How hard was it that, to make that decision to uproot your family and go and, and leave your home? Very hard, very hard. But Hoyt's saying he cannot feel completely free while many of his former colleagues and friends are in jail. Ho is still campaigning for change in his home city. Does being in exile diminish your ability to impact change within Hong Kong? I would say being outside of Hong Kong, I, I have the freedom to speak whatever I can without being afraid of the consequences. 
As athletes and officials from all over the world arrive in the Chinese capital for one of the world's oldest sport traditions, a reminder of what these activists are up against. I think undeniably it is going to be a very long and very tough journey. And the pressure these world-class athletes will face beyond their quest for gold. All right, Britt Clenet, thank you so much for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.